Oh, hey wizard, welcome back. Today's a good day because it's new plate carrier review day. And in this video, we'll be tearing into the Shaw Concepts Arc V2 plate carrier. And this plate carrier is really good, but let's see if it can overcome that clout chasing cost. Let's tear into it and find out. All right, let's get started. Now, I'm pretty excited to show off this Shaw Carry 2 because there's been a ton of requests from our viewers and everybody kind of wants to see where it ends up with its you know, extensive set of features <laughs> along with its excessive cost. We also did a video assembling and reviewing the Arc V3 placard along with the node pouch. The placard is a really nice base and won't break the bank to get started, while the node pouch is kind of at the top of the market in terms of price, but also leads the market in terms of features. And I'll link to those up here and add them into the description if you're curious about those bits when we go to add them into this whole plate carrier setup. Now, there is one caveat to this whole thing that we need to talk about, the price. Now, generally I try to avoid talking about price because I, I don't know, price can kind of fluctuate over time and it's not just an absolute thing. But, but I have to kind of bring it up here because the price of the Shaw Concepts gear really influences kind of where it lands within the ranking. As that cost sometimes being double other carriers, it often lends me to recommend competitor products when people are making an initial carrier purchase. As paying a ton of money for like a starter carrier and basics, I don't know, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But tell you what, let's roll all this back for just a second and let's answer that question of who is Shaw Concepts? Shaw Concepts aligns its principles in designing equipment that allows responsible citizens and military members to operate with increased comfort and proficiency, allowing its users to conquer all obstacles, whether it's defending your family, completing training, or for top tier military operations. And it's really refreshing to like talk to the owner at Shaw, like he's super, super down to earth, instead of being, you know, some other people out there that tell you not to have an ego and then have just like a really big ego. And in the tactical world, it could be a whole lot of chest thumping and a whole lot of eye rolling from me. So it's really nice to see like such a high tier of like plate carrier production and, and like the level he operates at and then be really humble about it. That's, it's just really nice to see. But let's stay focused on what we're doing and let's take a look at our current plate carrier rankings. Here it looks like I jockeyed with this on our MAPC 2.0 update video. We currently have the slimline precision of the Agilite K0 in first, with the amazingly customizable MEPC 2.0 in second, with the wildly innovative Javelin Concepts Ajax in third, and our team-focused HRT rack in fourth. And I'm pretty sure the ARC carrier is going to stay in that slimline carrier category. I don't think it's going to shift over at all. But if something changes as we go through the review, we'll, we'll adjust course. What? What about the core exo carrier? Oh. Yeah, I'll take three seconds on this one. It costs more than the Shaw, and it's worse. There you go, Exo Carrier. Well, let's go ahead and start by tearing into the Shaw Arc V2 plate carrier, and I'm sure I'm gonna have all sorts of sandwiches and other ridiculous jammed into the review, but let's get started as usual with that front plate bag. Here's our look at the Arc V2 and its front bag. It looks very similar to a lot of other carriers, but there's so much going on here, it's hard to know exactly where to start to show it all to you. Now something a little bit different here, the front and the rear of the front plate bag play into each other a lot, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of flipping back and forth. Like here, we see the shoulder straps with the single QD and single buckle. We can reach to the back and realign the shoulder straps to be more wider or more narrow, depending on the angle they're connected back in. Meaning our guys with like the cobra hoods back here on their neck can widen everything out to get it over their lats, or just our little guys out there can fold everything back in to get a more comfortable fit. And it just makes the whole thing a lot more comfortable over a wide array of different body types. And this whole customization of the rear is called their spider system. And it's really neat how it ties plate bag size, user customization, and routing comms and cables all together. Some folks may also hate the QDs on the shoulder or want two QDs, and you're able to remove these entirely or add in your favorite system of choice. Now, is it mildly frustrating to like swap sides of them or just remove them entirely? Well, yes, it kind of is, but you really only do it once and then you never have to like deal with it again. So I don't know, it's a non-issue. Back on our carrier, the top of this area on the plate bag can be used to route comms, drinking tubes or whatever. Each of the tabs is held in place by the rear hook and loop 
making routing super easy and simple. And those tabs like fold over and actually kind of like form fit your plates. So having like the perfect cut, like swimmer or sappy for your plate carrier, well, here it, it doesn't really matter, but I'll show you all that when we get into it. Moving down, I wanna come back to the center field in just a second. But along the sides are two elastic straps that connect into the spider system to retain your plates. But they could also be used for various comms routing or securing a drinking tube. Here, you'll notice these odd-sized angled holes. These can be used for PTT connections using shock cords or anything else to tie it up. I didn't end up using that as I had an extra slot to just use a standard Ranger Band connection. Moving down, we see our quasim buckles that we can use to connect into our placard, or we could just remove these altogether to have a more low-profile G-hook connection. And if you haven't noticed, we made this whole plate carrier setup kind of ridiculous, so I don't think low-profile matters at this point. Back to the top hook and loop field, this area is molly and loop backed, allowing you to connect in pouches or molly in specialized gear. Here, we'll connect in the Shaw admin pouch. This allows us to have a more discreet and available pocket for our communication devices. Closing this up, we can also make sure to add in some super serious patches here. Getting some bananas and some giraffe gang in there. Moving down, we see the hook and loop field that attaches into our cummerbund system. Now, I want you to see this as this is how it comes assembled, but we're gonna remove these standard hook and loop bits to instead connect the tubes into the side of our ARC V3 placard that we already put together in the previous video. And it's nice you have the options because you don't have to do this, but I like how it integrates my placard and my cummerbund into like one cohesive system. Now, you would lose the ability to like quickly swap out different placards for maybe for different calibers. So that may be something you wanna weigh if you're considering configuring it in this setup also. Looking at the opening of the plate bag, we see the bag opening is enlarged and has no issues with thicker plates such as our RMA 1165 or even thinner HESCO 4401s. Now, quick pause here because this is normally the part I would tell you that I'm upset that there's no actual retention in the plate bag to bring that weight of the plates up higher or secure it better into the front plate bag. But the spider system actually solves it in a pretty unique way. Moving to the rear here is where you actually configure your bag to your plates. First, we remove our pads so we gain access to the spider system underneath. And one more super secret thing, yes, you can actually remove these pads to make a crazy little like lightweight 3A soft armor setup also. I'll show you later, but it's just a very, very awesome configuration that makes for a wild trunk or car carrier. Anyway, you open up the spider system and begin to roll the fabric and cinch down the plate so it has a nice secure fit. So our wide RMAs have a totally custom sizing just for these plates. Or if we swap over to the HESCO plates, we see the same custom adjusted fit. So sappy, not sappy, swimmer cut, shooter cut, doesn't matter. It all fits just fine. It's a super smart system. At this plate sizing step is where you can go back and readjust those shoulder straps if you want a better angle. Once you have it all set, we add the padded covers back into place. I'll go ahead and add in our Ray Dangler hook and loop portion into the bag opening and connect it in via the first spear tubes QD. The plate bag closes up easy and along this bottom flap are additional slits to aid in routing comms or whatever you could be doing here. So that's the quick and dirty of the front bag, but there's a ton of stuff that's going on here. So if you ever pick this up, make sure to go over it in detail. But let's keep going and let's move on to the rear bag. Here we see much of the same style as the front bag with the same adjustable shoulder straps and rear spider connection system. We also see the same loop back molly panel if you wanna add in additional gear or patches on the rear of your carrier. We also see the entire rear of the panel is full molly to allow you to connect in rear pouches or packs. We'll add in the plate carrier pack later, so we'll keep it slick for now. And at this point, I wanna note that everything I've ordered like seems complete. At no point did I feel like I'm nickel and dimed or like I ordered a rear plate bag that I had to order the Molly panel separately for. So big thumbs up so far. Oh, well, I guess there isn't a drag handle. If that's important to you, <laughs> I didn't see one. Moving down to the rear plate bag opening, we see this flap also hides the cummerbund connection system. Here they use a loop back design with latching holes placed inside to allow for both hook and loop based cummerbunds along with those bungee connection style ones. 
And thank God the hook and loop is there. Like the bungee connection system, I think is just some sort of nostalgia, like, like the old M16s we had. And much like the M16s, that bungee latching system absolutely sucks. And Shaw likely included it for legacy gear integration, but the only reason you'd use this god-awful choice is when you don't have elastic built into your structural cummerbund. But if you've ever messed with it, you know it level 10 sucks. Along the sides of the hook and loop are also slots to allow you to feed in the ends of your cummerbund straps for added security. The bottom plate bag opening mimics the front with a wide opening for oversized plates. Again, we remove our pads and adjust our spider system to make that perfect fit for our rear plate also. And I think those RMA 1165s are just money and there's a discount code down in the description if you need your own set. But let's keep moving and go into the shoulder straps next. One tidbit though, I also have a bit of a love-hate relationship here. Let's take all this off so I can show you everything that's going on, then we can add the bits back in. At the base, we have our shoulder straps. You can lift the rear strap to gain access to the front strap adjustment. Here, you'll be able to adjust the front and rear bag independently to get the correct fit on your body. Now though, at this point, like you're looking at it and you're saying like, oh wow, there is just a ton of adjustment here. But some wonky things start to happen if we start to go too tight with this. This bottom loop here is how you integrate our rear pack attachment. So we can't cover this portion if we wanna use that later putting some pretty heavy limitations on our adjustment range. Like right now, I have it as small as the shoulder adjustment will let me go, and I'm not a small guy. Any smaller though, and I can't use the actual PCP attachment. Now, if you don't care about using the rear pack, then you have a ton more room. You just have dangly bits everywhere. The shoulder pads integrate nicely and add a ton more surface area for added comfort. You secure in the shoulder pad strap between the main strap so that it can't shift around. Then you close it all up with the padded side facing towards your neck. And this is great because then you don't get like that red scratched up neck from like your plate carrier straps. And I'm honestly surprised we don't see more of this from other gear companies. Now look though, the pads are huge though. Like, like huge, huge. We'll see how the adjustment test goes though, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to remove any of the rear pack attachment features in order to size it on my wife at all. But we got one piece left and let's move in and look at the actual cummerbund. As we showed earlier, this comes with the included first spear tubes and hook and loop panel. The hook and loop panel was removed though, so we could connect directly into the placard. Here we see a Tegris reinforced cummerbund with five full molly slots, allowing you to connect in various gear along the outside and hook into the Tegris core for additional support. Along the inside, we also see some cool stuff with this loop lined interior. Here we can connect in the Art Cummerbund side buckets. Now, annoyingly, these are not included and it does take forever for them to come in stock. Maybe this is a good time to tell you that putting this whole like plate carrier setup together took me about eight months. But let's ignore that for now. With the side buckets, you can connect these directly into the Cummerbund to give you the ability to have additional padding against the body while allowing you to place in additional mags and side plates. Yeah, but you'd need the little side plate bag covers for those too. And if you did all this, you're definitely gonna be spending some money compared to a lot of the competitor carriers. But it is really cool once you get it all together. Does it hold plates twice as well as carriers at half the cost? Well, no, but it looks cool though. The Cummerbund doesn't have any built-in expansion, so you have to use the iPhone 1 equivalent connection system with this bungee latching but this bungee is pivotal because it adds much needed chest expansion and allows the cummerbund to move and adjust to the user. It's just god awful to set up and configure everything compared to some of the real next gen stuff we're seeing from like Agilite, defense mechanisms and HRT. But you'll bang your head against the table after you've tied and retied this for the eighth time. And then you finally connect in your front placard and hook in your first spear tubes to put everything together. We can also take a moment to add in some extra cool guy patches on our placard with our Shaw patch and this super serious peanut butter and jelly patch. One last bit I'll add in here are quasim buckles to both sides of the shoulder straps and both sides of the cummerbund, so we can connect in the rear plate bag also, making our setup totally configured and now complete. And voila, we have our whole plate carrier assembled and finally put together. I will tell you though, even with all my complaining, I think I was being 
pretty generous with how horrible that bungee connection system is. Anyway, let's move into our actual like plate carrier test. And the first test is, you gotta be kidding me, the shoulder strap and cummerbund adjustment test. For such a high tier, I don't think a plate carrier has ever performed worse here. Getting its size to me involved tying and retying the system in various positions and different styles of knots, and then undoing the entire shoulder pad system to adjust the plate carrier correctly. I want the rear bag attachment to stay functional, so there's no further adjustment for my size, but thankfully it fits me just perfectly. And it fits great in the end, but it was an absolute chore just to get here. And the next test is the size adjustment range, and I'm absolutely skipping that. I'm not tying and retying all this just to fit it to my wife. I will tell you right now that it will not fit and it will piss me off to no end. If you're a small person, I, I wish you the best of luck with this plate carrier. Uh, let's go on to the next category and it actually does really well on this one. This is gonna be the plate insertion and size. One of the shining points of the ARC V2 is the spider system. From large to small to sappy to swimmer cut, you can get a perfect fit for your plates every single time. The spider system is just really smart, but I will say that I found like the thicker or the multi-curve plates kind of filled out the whole system a little bit better and you didn't have as much like bunchy fabric on the side. All right, the next test, let's look at all the available colorways. Hold up. Now, these are the available colors, but I wanna put a small asterisk on it for now. You can get the ARC V2 in multicam, coyote brown, Ranger Green, Black, Wolf Gray, ooh, that Wolf Gray is sweet. And then some colors I don't think are actually available at all with the Multicam Arid, Tropic, and M81 Woodland. And I say asterisk because a lot of those colors just aren't available, like you can't just go out and buy them. And it's part of what makes this whole review kind of frustrating. If you were excited about this, you couldn't just go out and buy it. Like, I think my wait time was about four months and paying double and waiting four months for a comparative feature set to like a K0 uh, or an MEPC, just, I don't know, it's just not all that bright. Oh, but one thing, Shaw did move away from product drops, so I do wanna do a super huge head nod for moving us away from that like literal hell that they seem to think we enjoy. All right, though, we have another category and it does really, really well on this one also, and this is gonna be the expansion test. Here the ARC V2 just explodes with possibilities. With this smart spider system, you can easily route cables and cords. And with so many Molly panels and connection methods, you can expand up or down into just a ton of different mission roles. Expansion and transformation of this carrier is just top notch, so it's just totally awesome to see. All right, the next test is another good one. It's gonna be the donning and doffing test. With the included first beard tubes and optional shoulder QDs, the ARC V2 performs astoundingly. It's easy to just unhook our carriers from the tube connection to take it off, and then just place it back on quickly, and then connect our tubes for a fast and secure setup. It's just super fast and easy to use, and it honestly makes me wanna swap out my connection system like on my other Cumberbund setups for the actual like first spear tubes connection, because it's just a lot easier to use that one. I forgot where we're at. Okay, next test is the rifle cheek weld test. Here I found the low profile straps worked well if I wanted to place the rifle right on top of them. The straps didn't include any material to reduce slipping like on the K0, so the ARC V2 straps held the stock in position, but there isn't much special going on in terms of the strap itself. Being able to angle the strap gave me the most advantage when being able to place the stock on the inside of my shoulder strap in my usual stock position, making the entire setup very fluid and familiar. Adding in the rear pack, we did get some added bulk that does add some interference if you place your stock right on the strap. Again though, I just recommend angling the shoulder strap so it's a non-issue, like how I have it configured. Now the straps are low profile enough if you wanna put the stock on them though. But again, let me recommend you just actually angle the shoulder straps so that the stock is against your body and then not against the actual shoulder strap. All right though, we got one test left. It's gonna be our prone comfort test. Here, the included large pads on the carrier did a great job of distributing my weight across the entire front carrier face, making for one of the most comfortable carriers we've seen yet. If you lay down and take a nap, this is the perfect carrier for it. I had no issues with the prone and found this carrier was top tier for shooting or 
even just napping. Just don't fill your nerd patch with a ton of crap and then just dive down to the ground. It like <laughs> almost knocked the wind out of me. All right though, so that's all of our tests and we've gone over and configured the entire carrier. So let's go into our pros and cons. And the first pro I wanna mention is all that really smart expansion. With the ability to route cables and full molly everywhere, there are just so many ways to scale the shock carrier up to different levels quickly from adding in full placards to admin pouches or even rear packs, you can transform this carrier into whatever you need. And having the actual rear pack accessible like on the DM Reconde pack is absolutely awesome. Okay, so the next big pro I wanna talk about is that whole spider system to get all your plate size right. From sappy to swimmer cut, the spider system makes different size plates a non-issue. As you can form and fit each individual plate for your plate bag, the end user has a custom fit for each plate every single time. And some companies charge like a billion dollars to have like custom fitted plate bags to certain size plates. So it's pretty awesome the Arc V2 just gives those guys the middle finger and just fits all the plates on the market. All right though, let's keep this bus moving. And the last pro I wanna talk about is the actual comfort and all the user configuration. The Arc V2 is amazingly comfortable with the front included pads. Combined with the ability to adjust the shoulder strap angle, you have a great fitting carrier that can be adjusted and customized for each individual user, resulting in a carrier fit that is just fantastic. And having the whole thing form to you and angle to your actual body type just makes the whole system just feel stupid great. Now though, I've tipped my hat to a few cons as we've been going through some things, and I'm gonna avoid the elephant in the room for now and instead talk about the first con that it's a total pain in the ass to adjust it. Now, I love how the shoulder pads are tied in, but getting to this to make adjustments or tying and untying this failed engineering student disaster is just god awful. I never ever wanna have to deal with this again. And the shoulder straps are kinda just set it and forget it but I gotta undo all the bungee and do all this stupid just if I wanna put a jacket on? Nope, nope, not doing that. I'll just wear a different carrier at that point. And that really highlights another con, the overall size adjustment range. With the rear pack attachment requiring access to the front slot, you're limited on how far you can shrink this carrier down. And if you do go ultra small, you'll have the cummerbund and shoulder strap bits all over the place. And it just certainly wouldn't be screaming quality to be wearing it and having all those dangly bits. And then I'd be super mad if I had to cut them off. All right, let's finally address the monster con in the room, the cost and availability. The Shaw carrier in its raw form is twice the cost of comparative carriers while also having a four month backlog on your purchase. With other attachments unavailable, you'll also need to spend a lot of time hunting for those other pieces you need and also spending twice as much on those also. Like I want you to understand, you could have two plate carriers for the cost of this. Now, is the Shaw Arc V2 absolutely awesome? Yes, yes it is. Is it twice the cost awesome? No. So taking everything into account, all the good and all the bad, what are my final thoughts and rankings? The Shaw Arc V2 offers some bleeding edge features with expansion and customization to integrate legacy and next generational systems. The Arc V2 also makes for one of the most comfortable carriers we've seen yet, but loses points in its adjustment and overall size range. That combined with the sky high cost and difficulty to even get one, I place the Arc V2 in fourth. And I get it, some Shaw guys are gonna be super upset, because the Arc V2 is one of the best carriers on the market. I won't lie to you there. But I'm sorry, it just wouldn't be my first recommendation to someone who's gonna be looking to purchase their initial plate carrier. The Arc V2 is for people who know they need an Arc V2, and those people probably aren't paying for the plate carriers themselves. But I hope this review of the Shaw Concepts Arc V2 was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You make it awesome that we can get all this cool equipment, put it all together and show it off to you, and then you can determine if you actually wanna buy it or not. And then I wanna say thanks to everyone who likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about this Shaw Carrier, if it's worth the cost. I wanna hear about it from you all. All right, everybody, wash out.
I bumbled the ending there. What was I? I don't think I said my name. I mean, I mean, it is really cool. It's it's cool. But from I mean, from my angle, it looks like every other carrier. I mean, it's just holding plates. I don't think you have any idea how much I never ever want to take that bungee apart. Like never. I ne I will never take that apart again. Mm -mm. Nope. All right. <laughs> Go away.